guys want to hear something interesting, listen to this. Obviously something's wrong with this thing's transmission and that's what we're fixing today. So I've been working on the pickup a lot lately and I've kind of been neglecting this Forerunner. And one of the reasons that this thing was so cheap is because it has this issue with the transmission. Now I'm not sure what it was exactly, but the guy told me that it got, that thing's tight. He told me that, uh, geez, that thing's tight. He told me it got stuck in fourth gear and he towed it home. So I don't really know what would cause that, but I'm sure once we get this thing taken apart, we'll figure it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with draining out the oil from the transfer case and the transmission, and then we'll start taking off this cross member, the drive shaft, slave cylinder, everything else that's in the way, and drop this transmission out. I'm also potentially dealing with some black widows in here. I am in California and it's starting to get hot and we have a lot of black widows and I'm seeing a lot of webs that appear to be black widow webs. So hopefully we can find them before they find me. Watch this just be a bunch of metal that comes out of here. It's not even oil, it's just a bunch of metal shavings. It kind of does look like a bunch of metal shavings. That is definitely metal influenced fluid. That is not the normal color that is supposed to be. We might be looking at a new transmission here or maybe a full rebuild. Once again, I don't know, gotta get this thing off and see what it looks like inside, but at the moment, just based off of that, uh, we're not looking, we're not looking too hot. Sometimes these bolts on the drive shaft are so damn tight that I just use a jack to jack the box wrench up to, <laughs> to get the nut out because it's just way too hard to do it without uh, any assistance or anything. That's one of the best ways I've found to get these things off. If you have a better technique, let me know. Normally I'm down here with two wrenches and a hammer or a jack or vice grips or something, because these things are just so hard to get out. So if you know of an easier way, please let me know. Luckily, this truck doesn't have a front drive shaft. When the previous owner swapped in the 3RZ, they took out the front drive shaft because it didn't clear the oil pan or something. So it actually has no front uh, drivetrain at all, just um, basically two wheel drive. But that's okay because I did plan on straight axle swapping it anyway. But I'm happy that that front drive shaft is gone because if you've ever taken one of those things off, all of the bolts are really hard to get to and they're extremely tight and hard to get off and there's no room, so that's about probably 30 minutes of time that's gonna be saved today, not having to deal with that front drive shaft. All right, this thing should just pop right off. Oh, we got a leaky pinion seal. Okay. So this is what happens when you let old trucks sit Seals go bad. They don't go that bad. That's probably already bad, just being held in by the gunk and whatnot that's behind this yoke here, but yeah. So another thing we gotta replace. Whoa. All right, I got the drip pan down to catch all this. So yeah, that is not supposed to happen. 
So now that I have the drive shaft off, I'm kind of faced with a problem. As you can see here, I just took the drive shaft off of the slip joint here, but I also have this exhaust in the way from the 3RZ swap that is kind of blocking the telehousing of the transmission. I don't know if I'll be able to get that off. My laziness tells me to just leave the exhaust on and try to maneuver it around it, but my brain tells me that this is probably gonna have to come off. So another thing that I noticed is all of this wiring above the cat right here. So I wonder how many more sketchy things I'll find with this swap. I don't like that there because cats get very hot. And even though parts of this harness probably aren't used after the swap, I still don't want wiring just sitting right there. So I wonder how many other things I'll find on this truck that I have to fix. I don't really know what route I'm gonna take. I might take the exhaust off, I might have to, but what sucks is as you can see, it's just welded all the way through. There's no flanges. And it's like that all the way up to where it meets the header or the exhaust manifold, all the way, where's my finger? All the way up there. So yeah. Well, as you can see, I took the lazy route. I took off the front of the drive shaft. Looks like it has some aftermarket bushings in there or something, like energy suspension or something, right? So I'm gonna try to maneuver the transmission around the exhaust, and if I can't do it, I'll just take the exhaust off. No big deal. I have to take it off anyway for California smog. What I meant by taking it off anyway for California smog for my viewers that aren't in California, you can't just swap any motor that you want into any car or truck in California. We have crazy strict smog laws and basically if you put a different motor into any vehicle that's newer than 1975 you have to get it BAR'd which barred I guess which means you have to take it to an inspector they have to make sure everything is exactly as it was in the donor vehicle in your vehicle and if it's not then you fail you can't drive it you can't even register it so all that stuff has to be done perfectly. So the exhaust that's on it right now, California's not happy with the one cat that's on it. Apparently a 2000 Forerunner had two cats, so this one has to have two cats as well. So that's what I meant when I said I have to take the exhaust off this anyway. Also, sorry I'm squinting. It's so bright out here I can't see a damn thing. I have to close my eyes to even open them, if that makes any sense at all. With the drive shaft out of the way, I need to remove the shifters. And then I need to come over here to the engine bay and disconnect my negative battery terminal so I don't make sparks when I try to remove the starter. Then I need to remove any wiring that's involved with the transmission harness, take off the bolts that hold the bell housing to the block, and then remove the mount from the transmission that goes up to the frame that cradles it in there. Once that's all done, I'm sure I'm forgetting one or two things, but oh, and the slave cylinder too, that has to come off. So once those things are done, I should be able to get this transmission out of the truck. This boot is toast anyway, that's why I'm tearing it. It was already torn. So getting these shifters out is weird. It's not hard, it's just weird. There's a little like sleeve inside that you basically have to push down. And when you push it down, you turn the shifter and it lets you get the shifter out. I'll show you that in a second right after I get this uh, all this crap out of the way. Apparently it's different on uh, first gen forerunners as compared to second gen, cause on my second gen you had to push it down and turn it, but whatever, that's a lot easier. As you can see this bushing is cracked right here, so. These are notoriously go bad, so swap that out anyway. And then probably swap out the bushing that's in there as well. This one, even though, you know, it's not in that bad a shape, but we can put in one of those Marlin crawler bushings here and make this a lot tighter of a shift. The transfer case shifter is just a snap ring, so that's an easy one. And both the shifters are out. I got the wiring removed and the slave cylinder taken off, off camera, and I took off the starter too, and it's unbelievable how hard it was to get that starter out of there. One of the things you have to think about when you are working on this is that it's a 3RZ, so it uses a W59 bell housing, and everything is flipped to the other side, and there's no room to get anything off, so getting that starter off was so challenging. 
And another thing is, I saw that this wire fell apart. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It's the only plug on the entire transmission, which seems unreal to me. I'm not sure how the reverse lights and other things were working. So I'm gonna have to fix that, solder it up, and uh, do some research into the wiring for this swap and figure out why I only have one plug on that transmission. And another thing is over here, normally you have a little plate right here so that no debris gets into the flywheel or the, the clutch area, and on mine, nothing's there. So another sketchy thing I found about the swap, uh, not something that we're gonna be leaving. Obviously, if we're gonna be rock crawling this truck, we can't have an open hole to the flywheel right here. So now I just have to remove the rest of the bell housing bolts. Obviously, this one's easy to get to, but there's a bunch of them smashed up against the firewall up there that are gonna be extremely hard to get to. So I'm sure this will be my view for the next hour or so. There's two bolts on top of the bell housing and this is me attempting to remove those same two bolts for over an hour. I could not find a way to access them. You're about to see how ridiculous they are to access. I have to show you guys how hard these bell housing bolts are to get to. You can't even see it from here, but let me just try to show you. It's way back down there. So I tried to get a wrench on it. You can't see it yet, can you? It's way, there it is. That is where my ratchet is. I tried to get a wrench back there. I tried to go from above the transmission while under the car to kind of reach over and loosen it. I've tried to go from the passenger side, from the driver's side, from the top, from the bottom. I tried everything. It is so far back there, you can't even see it. That is my ratchet. You can barely see it right in the middle of the screen. That's the handle of the ratchet. And I'm trying to find a way to get in there to loosen that, but I'm not seeing how it is possible. There you go, you can kind of see it better now. So that's my wrench right there in the back of the motor. Here's where that is, zoomed out. I'm starting to think I might not be able to get this transmission off without pulling the motor out due to the way that this is mounted. Another bolt that I don't know how I'm going to get to is back here and I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. It is deep in there, like way behind everything here. Even if I took the exhaust off, I wouldn't be able to get to it. And the way that they're kind of in there with the like casting ridges on the transmission, I can't really turn a wrench. It just immediately hits the cast and the cast prevents it from being able to you know, use the wrench if that makes sense. So it's it's almost like I need to get a socket on that and uh, there's just no room. You can just barely see the bolt right there, right in the middle of the screen. Let me zoom out and show you where that is. So <laughs> yeah, I can't get to it from the bottom. I can't get to it from the top. Not really sure what to do. So after fighting with those bolts for about an hour, I think I found a solution. This is what I came up with. It's just a bunch of extensions getting me the space I need to access those bell housing bolts. So as you can see, it's just an extension on an extension on an extension all the way back to my ratchet here. And uh, yeah, it, it actually worked. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and that will be all of the bell housing bolts done. Ha <laughs> Yes! Finally! Yes! Woo! We got it out. The exhaust is in the way, and we knew this would happen. I just tried to do it anyway, but 
I think I can pry it out of the way and get this thing down. I don't see why not. I think I just need a bigger pry bar. Well, I tried being lazy with the exhaust and the forerunner said no. So now we're taking the exhaust off. I'm surprised that one didn't break, it was so tight. I had to use the, uh, the handle off the jack as a breaker bar to get that thing even off. I was fully expecting that stud to snap, I honestly can't believe it. Oh, <laughs> it took the entire stud out. So, there you go. All right, well, I got the transmission off, as you can see here. I'll be honest, I didn't expect this thing to give me so much of a fight. It was these two bolts right here at the very top of the bell housing. The firewall runs like this, and the amount of space you have to get a wrench or a socket on that is about half an inch. So as you guys saw, I created this gigantic extension. It was like every extension I had in my entire garage all attached together in order to get this. And I had this big old six foot long extension going all the way over the top of the transmission just to get to those two bolts right here. So I don't know if that's due to my swap or if that's how it is on every single 3RZ with a manual transmission, but I am curious to know, for those of you who have done the same thing, let me know if you had to do anything crazy with extensions like that or if it just came off pretty easily. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, one of the reasons why this truck was so cheap is because the transmission was having issues. So the guy told me that he had it in fourth gear, it got stuck in fourth gear, and he just towed it home, never drove it again. Now, when I went and checked the truck out, he let me test drive it, and I noticed that it was basically second and fourth gear that were making that disgusting, crunching, grinding sound that you saw at the beginning of the video. So I did drive the truck the whole way home, about 60 miles from first gear to third gear to fifth gear. And ever since then, as you guys have seen, I've just been working on the interior. But I knew that I would have to eventually get to this because I can't drive the truck until I fix the transmission. So I'm going to try my hand at rebuilding this. I have built dual cases in the past, and I know that obviously the transmission's a little bit different, but it has to be somewhat similar. I'm sure that I'm going to need special tools, but I think I could figure it out. So in the next couple of videos, I'm definitely probably going to be taking this apart and trying to rebuild it. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Here we go, at the top of the class on a roll, and it's time to run it up, yeah you know, maxed out, put the pedal to the floor, ayy, on a roll.